We were certainly nervous going forward on this case. We did not have DNA. We did not have fingerprints. We had very small firearms evidence testimony. Um, this was a boots on the ground, tell me what you know type of case. Just after 10 p.m. on November 22, 2019, Beaufort County's 911 center erupts with emergency calls from the city of Beaufort's Southside neighborhood. A gray Ford Mustang has just gone streaking down the 2700 block of Waddell Road. It smashes into a crepe myrtle tree along the roadside, destroying the front end of the vehicle and causing the airbags to deploy. Callers summon help for the Mustang's only occupant, who is unresponsive when he is pulled from the driver's seat. At the same time, Beaufort County Dispatch is receiving reports of gunfire from the same area. One caller says she heard shots, then saw a car speeding down the road and three people on foot running from the area. Emergency responders arrive to find 20-year-old Ethan Bosworth next to his vehicle as Good Samaritans tend to him. Efforts to revive Bosworth fail, however. And at the hospital, doctors discovered what killed him. It wasn't the car crash. Bosworth has been shot three times on his right side. All three bullets enter through his shoulder. Two rip through vital organs. A forensic medical examiner determines these injuries likely killed Bosworth instantly. This crash investigation has just turned into a homicide investigation. City of Beaufort Police, with help from Port Royal Police and Beaufort Port Royal Firefighters, illuminate the area but find no shell casings or other physical evidence to shed light on the case. But just as the activity at Beaufort County's 911 center settles down, dispatchers receive one more phone call. At about 2 a.m., Bosworth's new girlfriend awakens to discover he has not returned to his grandmother's home where they had been hanging out earlier in the evening. She frantically tries to call him over the next 20 minutes, remembering what Bosworth told her just before he left. If I don't come back, call the police. She dials 911 and tells dispatchers her boyfriend's name and the type of car he drives. She also tells authorities that before Bosworth left, he had been exchanging Snapchat messages with someone who goes by the screen name Cam Cam. Then, Bosworth's girlfriend gives investigators the password to his iPhone, which was found in his front seat. It unlocks not only the phone, but the case as well. When they unlock their phone, they get the name Cam. There is a Snapchat message from Cam to Ethan minutes before he was shot. Um, and it says, yo bro, W-Y-A, which investigators were able to, to learn was where are you at? Uh, they also were able to look at his call log and it showed multiple calls from Ethan to Cam, who this Cam person is, who we later learn is Cameron Kim, um, right before he was shot with the last one being at 10.17 p.m. Uh, the 911 call started at 10.19 p.m. Cameron Kim is an 18-year-old who, like Bosworth, is a former Buford High School student. They have several friends in common. There are no shell casings on scene. There is no firearm in Ethan's car. There's no signs of a struggle. There's no signs of a robbery. When Ethan is transported, at that point, we learn that he is shot, and now we have to figure out why. However, social media is abuzz with news of Bosworth's death, along with information suggesting who killed him and why. Mining this information is easier said than done, however. So Snapchat is a social media platform where the users can view messages, posts, stories by people that they are connected with through Snapchat. But the, the point of Snapchat is that these messages, these posts, these stories that they are able to see disappear within 24 hours. Um, some disappear the moment that you open it, see it, and close it back. So if you do not save one of these messages or save one of these posts, then they disappear and they disappear everywhere. That means that we are unable to get to access them even with a search warrant from Snapchat. We can't even get these records. If a person, a user saves a post or even if they screenshot it on their phone, the other user is notified. And we had that uphill battle with, with most of our witnesses in this case. They knew that they saw important things on Snapchat or messages or posts that Cameron Kim had made. They didn't save them. And the reason that they did not save them is they were scared because they knew that once they saved that message, he would know they saved it. 
Nonetheless, a motive emerges from the statements Kim's friends make to police, along with the digital post that could be preserved before it vanished into the ether. Um, Cameron Kim had a girlfriend at the time, and she befriended Ethan. And from then on, we knew that this was a case about love and jealousy and the wrath of Cameron Kim. In the weeks before Bosworth's murder, Kim tells friends he is itching to catch a body, street lingo for killing someone. And he recently has acquired the means to satisfy this craven desire, a 32 caliber revolver. Authorities find several photos of Kim and his friends posing with the gun. In one video, shot at a home in the Southside area where Kim and his friends have spent the day drinking and smoking marijuana shortly before Bosworth was murdered, Kim is seen loading his weapon. But this Snapchat video shows Cameron Kim with a revolver in his hands. Not only does it show him holding the revolver, it shows him loading the revolver. That was significant in this case because when Beaufort City is investigating, they do not find any shell casings on scene. Um, immediately it is suspected that because there are a lack of shell casings that a revolver could have been used as the murder weapon. But why would Ethan Bosworth be Kim's target? Ethan was originally from the Beaufort area. He had ties to the, to the community, to the area. He had gone off to boarding school in Atlanta and just recently returned to the Beaufort area prior to him being, being murdered. He had a new girlfriend here, um, his family was here, and, and everything seemed to be going well for Ethan until he befriended Cameron Kim's girlfriend. And it was with that friendship that things turned fatal for Ethan. Regardless of the relationship between Ethan and this girlfriend, it didn't matter to Cameron Kim. He was jealous and he was going to take his wrath out on Ethan for whatever he believed Ethan was doing with his girlfriend at the time. But one of those 911 callers said they saw three people running from Waddell Road after the shooting, not one. That means they were likely witnesses to the act, but also other potential people of interest. The physical description of one of the people seen on Waddell Road that night matched Jason McFadden, who says he has been Kim's best friend since third grade. Investigators interview him several days after Bosworth's murder. He tells them that he and Kim left the home where they had been partying shortly before 10 p.m. He believed Kim had arranged a meeting with Bosworth, who was going to bring him a cigar, which pot smokers sometimes hollow out and fill with marijuana. A third party goer, a miner who lived nearby, left the house at about the same time but turned off Waddell Road to walk down Talbert Road toward his home, just as Bosworth drove into the area in his Mustang. McFadden had been walking several steps ahead of Kim and kept going down Waddell as Bosworth slowed and apparently attempted to talk to Kim through his rolled down passenger side window. Then McFadden heard several gunshots. He turned and this is what he saw. Who did you see doing the shots? This is important, Jason. 253 What kind of gun did he have? 32 revolver. A what? 32 revolver. 32 revolver? What happened to that revolver? I, I don't know. I just started running when I heard the shots. McFadden said he had lost sight of the third boy by that time, but he and Kim both ran from the scene. McFadden returned home and Kim joined him there a short time later, but without the 32 caliber revolver he had left the party with. That murder weapon was never recovered. Um, he obviously was reluctant. He did not want to testify. But we were able to believe what he said initially at that interview that Cameron and Kim was the one that did it because there was corroborating evidence. We also had multiple witnesses come in that were able to provide the motive for Cameron and Kim to kill Ethan. At about the time Bosworth's girlfriend is making the 911 call that would provide the first big break in the case, Kim is boasting in Snapchat messages to a friend about finally catching his first body, messages he quickly deletes. Kim is arrested and charged with Bosworth's murder. Mary Jones of the 14th Circuit Solicitor's Office prosecutes the case. At Kim's trial, which begins October 25, 2021, she calls 22 witnesses during two days of testimony, including experts from the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, the Medical University of South Carolina, and several acquaintances of both Kim and Bosworth. And fortunately, the community wanted to help, and Ethan's friends, and even people that were friends with Cameron Kim when this happened, they came forward and they did the right thing. And it is nerve-wracking, it is, it is hard to present a case like that to the jury, because in today's world, they want that CSI factor, they want 
the, the smoking gun. They want the DNA aha moment. And we weren't gonna be able to give that to them. And we knew we weren't but we believed our witnesses, they were consistent, they were strong, and they were ready to, to come forward and tell what they knew. And piece by piece, we were able to put it together and present the whole story to the jury. On the stand, the testimony of Jones's witnesses is consistent with statements they gave to police nearly two years earlier, with one exception. Jason McFadden had been friends with Cameron Kim since they were in the third grade. He was Cameron Kim's best friend, and he told us that when we were interviewing him before trial, he told us that. Um, he did tell us what, what he saw that was consistent with what he had originally told the police. The problem was when, when it came time to sit in that chair and point the finger at Cameron Kim, he would not do that. He refused to do that. He wouldn't even look at Cameron Kim when we were in court and he was on the witness stand. I knew that was going to, to be a problem, and I knew that that was going to happen. Um, Jason McFadden did not want to be a snitch. I could show the jury uh, portions of his prior statement and they were able to see what he said back on December 5th of 2019 and able to see that that was actually the truth. On October 27th, 2021, a Beaufort County General Sessions Court jury deliberates less than two hours before finding Kim guilty of murder. Circuit Court Judge Carmen T. Mullen sentences him to 45 years in prison. We have an 18-year-old shooter, a 20-year-old victim, and witnesses that range from 15 to 18 years old. Um, everybody involved was very young and, and almost naive about what they, what they were doing back in 2019. And it just made it very, very, very difficult and, and sad. Bosworth's murder is an unsettling revelation about the toxic mix of drugs, alcohol, and the parallel online lives of young people that can play out unbeknownst to parents and the broader community. It was hard um, to, to put the weight of the world essentially on the shoulders of these, these kids. They were teenagers when all of this happened and they were coming in to testify. Um, I think that this was the, the rude awakening that unfortunately a lot of them needed back in 2019. Um, but they did come forward and they, they did do the right thing. Mary Jones is a member of the Solicitor's Office Career Criminal Unit, which prosecutes the circuit's most violent and habitual offenders. This team of elite attorneys has secured convictions against 384 of the 403 defendants it has prosecuted since its inception in 2008.